Hey there guys, thanks for joining us on another gaming night. Tonight we are playing Quetropolis from Days of Wonder. Uh, with me I have Tony, hey, Tony. Uh, Martin, this is his copy of the game. We have Molo, Hello. <laughs> and myself Jason. Right, so this is the new game from Days of Wonder. Isn't that Days of Wonder, the people who only make one game a year? Yeah. And they're generally really, really good. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show you this. Each person has a little player board with four um, architects, and we have a little player sheet as well. Uh, I will be the first player if that's any relevance. Right. So what we're going to do? We've got this quad here of all the different types of buildings on, and on our turn, in turn order, we're going to place one of these little architects down. So for example, um, I could place that guy right there. So that would allow me to take the second building in that row. Or I could place them up there, which stays with second building in a column, and so on. For example, I could do the four there, which would allow me to take that park on the end there, and so on. So we take a building. Once you've taken the building, you then... I'm not going to take that building, that's rubbish. <laughs> oh, that one. So, for example, if I did that one on a two, I could place that there, or the two, which would be there. So I could place it into my city, and then, as you can see, it requires power to work. And it doesn't give me any other benefits until I get more population. And the population are these cool little meeples. And this is what the power looks like. Okay. So, we each turn, we take one of these, add them to our buildings, and then we're going to score at the end of the game for these various types. So, I'm not going to go over that now. Um, what we'll do is we'll go over that more later towards the end of the game or during the gameplay turn. But uh, essentially, turn order, we keep taking a building as we can, and then build our city up, and score as many points as we can, based on the different types. So, for example, if you want factories or harbours and things like that, you build your type of city that is relevant to that. Yeah, I mean, each building has its own scoring method. Uh, and I've just been through that with, with the guys here. So there's, there's actually quite a few different ways to score. So one of the hints in the rulebook says... Have a kind of an idea of how you want to be scoring um, before you kind of play, or I guess uh, mold your uh, play as you go. But have an idea of what you're trying to do because there's a lot of different ways, and I think it's likely that you're not going to do everything. Yeah, I think you've got to be flexible in this because in a four-player, most of the stuff will be gone by the time. Yeah. I mean, like you're going to be the last player, so yeah. you might you might go. I'm going to go factory, but when it comes to around you, there might not be a lot of factory. I'm actually left. quite glad I'm going last to be honest because it gives me an opportunity to see what everyone else is doing and. Because this is the first time any of us have played it as well. Yeah. So um, whilst the rules seem fairly straightforward, it gives me an idea to kind of think, okay, this is the sort of thing that I'm going to go for. Nobody else seems to be going for that at the moment. The gameplay turn is going to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll be back in a second with the gameplay turn, and then we'll explain more of the rules as we're going through the gameplay. Okay, so this is the gameplay turn. Uh, we're on the beginning of the third round, so there's only one more round after this one. Uh, you're looking at my city at the moment, so if, as you can see, I've gone a little bit of overpopulation. Of overpopulation, <laughs> yeah. I've uh, got a couple of factories on the end here with a shopping centre, a little harbour connecting to my town with a lot of districts to live in, and a playground. Uh, we'll go back to the playground. I mean, we actually got a question for you guys watching this. Actually, I'll do it now. Um, in the rules, it states, you see, like this one there, it says, if you have a park. It can, at the scoring phase, soak up one of your excess energy cubes. Right? It's basically pollution. Yeah. So, pol parks avoid, <coughs> avoid pollution. Yeah. But, as you can see, this one here, it doesn't have that symbol. And, in fact, provides a person. So, does that mean that this park cannot absorb pollution? Or is it just, it's a bonus because it provides you a, um, a person? So, we're not sure if these ones can avoid pollution at the end. I'm kind of with Tony on this one, I think, because it lacks the symbol and it gives you a person. It's basically just an alternate park, yeah. if you like. Yeah. So it'll, it'll still do the you know points for um, tower blocks, but it, it won't absorb pollution. But unfortunately, it explicitly states in the rules that they parks in general do. So so we're going we're gonna to go with that, as in it scores for tower blocks, but it doesn't, give, it doesn't avoid pollution. It gives you extra populace. Suddenly Milo's game's completely fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So that's what mine looks like. Let's have a look at Milo's. Really His looks lovely actually. Yeah. Yeah, I quite yeah. like it. Nice garden city I've got going on. Got the civic buildings going on here. Yeah. He's got also a tower block thing around the park. 
So another park over there, and then the one factory which you bought on the first turn to power all these tower buildings. Martin's the harbour master. He's gone on the coast, yeah. I've got uh, a little uh, civic a, a two floor um, tower there as well. There's the token freaking flat high rise in the harbour. And then just council buildings. <laughs> yeah. you know? And that's yeah. Tony. Urban, a lot of population, a lot of youths hanging around the shopping centre. Yeah, Jay and Silent Bob over there. Just to say as well, we've placed the um, the energy and the population on the tiles, but you can move them around as you want until the point that the the game's finished and we're doing the scoring. So obviously you'll try and maximise the points. Them, the yeah, it's like total. a visual representation, Absolutely. isn't it? Because anything that's not powered, so has a population or an energy on it, um, is removed from the board, so you won't score any points for that at all. So it can really bone you. So it's a good. Well, we felt it was a good way to just keep track of what is actually powered and what you've got in excess as well. Right, so Tony's the first player, and he's going to do his first architect. Okay, architect number three on that line, right up there. The yeah. So this here. this guy, you put the urbanist down. Now um, on my turn, I can't place an architect that points at him so I can't put one going that way or going that way or coming from this direction either. Okay, well I'm placing that because it was architect number three. I can place it on line three, column three or a third floor, which I match oh, in all nice. ways. Well done. And obviously the, the third floor thing is going to get bonus points. So the third floor is worth six points. Is that right? That doesn't seem that yeah. a lot. Yeah. Three for, yeah, but you get points for other things. But as well, try and yeah. mark as well, so yeah. let's go for that. Right, I'm going to place my four over here. I'm going to grab this harbour. So the urbanist goes in here. He comes with two people, and he goes in my line four. And I'll fill in that. And my two dudes here. And that's worth 12 points, because he's filled a full column. Cha -cha -ching. Provided you can obviously fill them with workers, which he's already sort of kind of done. I need to spend my power now. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think I am going to go, um, I want to go, I'm going to go this side. So I put my two on the end here. Uh, so I'm taking this building right here. And as you can see, column two or row two, it's going to go in there. Is that more people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Good two, God. two more people. You've got my... in China. <laughs> <laughs> but I've completed the park around there, so that's pretty good. Now I just need to get some more power. What are you doing? Actually, that's quite big points. It's only 11. Okay, I'm going to play it one. Ooh, all these people. Anyway, one there, and I'm going to drop this into here, yeah, I think. Oh, I'm sure I'm not pointing. Okay. Okay. And I'll play my last person. To these, were, these civic buildings are interesting. They score because you can divide the buildings into little, the areas into little quads. So for every one of these civic buildings you have in one of the quads, they score quite heavily, I think. Wow. So that's basically, Mola's got three. Five, nine, 14. Yeah, Mola's got three quads now, so it's nine points. And then it goes back to Tony. Okay. I'm going to get myself shopping centre. Hmm, lovely. Take up the surplus population to one. So I will place my shopping centre. And it could absorb four people. More hoodies hanging around. You got it? Yep. I'm going to place my three here. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to do my three there. Okay, and this dude moves over here. Oh, yes. Right. Okay. Unfortunately, he just took an area that I wanted. Yippee! So now I've got to quick think. It's like, how can I get more people? <laughs> Um, can you take this way? No, I, I want more people now. No, okay. <laughs> um, I think... Because obviously I can't take anything in this column now, or this column, that points towards that guy. So for example, if I wanted that harbour, I couldn't put this there to take the harbour because it's pointing at him. So, that means... I think I'm going to do this. So I'm going to put this down here. So that's my four, which is going to get me this factory, which I desperately need. Although I didn't think about where I'm going to put it. <laughs> going in four. Yep, which is going to be there. There's column four going across there. 
which gives me three yummy power, and I get to put one of my citizens <laughs> to work. <laughs> one of them. Just to say, Jason, as well, columns are down. Oh, yes. Rows are across. That's because I'm thinking. <laughs> he never uses Excel. <laughs> I'm going to pay my two architect. Two, grab that final wonderful civic building, which I'll have to find a guy for it. Yes, yeah, so I'm at that point now as well. I need people. Oh. Yeah. Four. Damn it. Boned. Who took the uh the other civic building? No, the oh there is. I was just looking at that because it's got the first player marker and I'm very tempted, but I think I want more people. I think I'm gonna go. So we finished done yet? Yep, yep. I'm going to go here, grab this guy, he's going in a one. Man, I wish I'd gone for the bloody other thing now. <laughs> Man, I'm running to run out of space in my village here. It's very difficult to get to a point where you're like neutral of resources. You either don't have anything full or uh, you've got too many things. Um, no. I'm think about this now. I've got, so for interest's sake, I've got a one and a three on my architects left. So looking at the board, that is what I'm trying to manipulate. But then I've also got to look at, for example, I've only got these spaces left. So if I use a 1, it's going to go there, or there. Uh, a 3 would have to go there, there, that's it. <laughs> so those are the spaces I have left. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 1, and I'm going to go there to take a park. Which will allow me to stick it down here in the corner so these two buildings will score off it. It's better than nothing. Definitely, man. So that's four points basically. <laughs> this screwed my life as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> I'll take that four. I'll put that there. And I don't have the energy yet for it, but I will take that fella and power my library. How oh, I could take that, Milo. Oh, and I need the first player. No. Ah, I actually don't know if we mentioned that. See this? It has the little green... The mayor symbol on Yeah, the mayor symbol. If you get that, you become the first player for the next round. Okay. Are you kidding, Tony? Yeah, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> what, have you got, what have you got left? A two? Yeah. So basically, you're looking at nothing there, nothing it's there. Like this harbour. Harbour or harbour? Well, it's got to be the 2VP harbour, I guess, isn't it? I was thinking either that or the one that Milo took would have been perfect so I could have made that on my floor too. And both took them, damn you. I've got double, no, I don't want that. Let's screw that then. In my two. Right. <sighs> there. Did I screw you? You blocked me. <laughs> so I'm left um, with a three. No, no, no. Oh, oh no, that's fine. <laughs> Hopefully. It's okay, move that thing away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's blocked me. I don't want that. I was thinking of going there to take the park. I think that you can do that, that's it, isn't it? So I'm left with that civic building. I mean, you can place it anywhere else that's available. Oh, you've got a harbour. Where would the harbour go? No useful. There is, eh? <laughs> yeah, all there. Yeah, I think I will take the harbour actually. So I'll go there for the harbour. And then harbours score if they in columns or if they're next to factories. So I'll put it. Um, no, factories score if they're next to shops or harbours. Harbours score if they're in a line. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. That's... So my options are there or there. That's going to do nothing for me, so it's going to have to go there. 
I was hoping to get that three park, which was over there, but this guy blocked me off. Because that park would have gone there. But that does give me another one of these and another one of these. Because so. you are lacking people. <laughs> can I? Oh, that was... Well, have you got a three? Three, which means I can only take the thing that I cannot possibly score off of and just disappear from my board at the end of the game. Um, yeah, just that thing, isn't it? Yeah, and I guess... I, I don't I don't want to waste the space on it just in case I get something better, so I'm just going to... There, I think you get yeah. nothing. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's a revolution. Oh yeah, just turn it first play. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it. Now basically we, we take back our architects. And these guys get cleared off the board, the remaining tiles. And then we shovel up the next, in this cool insert, we shovel up the next layer into the little shuffle bag and randomly bring them out. And then we go for the last round. So we'll be back with end of game and verdict in a few seconds. Okay, so we've finished off the game. Uh, we've tallied up the points. And I'll give you a quick look at my building, my city. That's how we scored it, basically like that. So have a think about who you think is going to win. Uh, that's what we did. Uh, and we worked it out. In last place was Molo. Well done, Molo. 40 points. First time playing, not too bad. That's what he ended up on. Milo scored most of, most of his points for the civic buildings, which are these ones. And then he also scored for the pops. Oh, yeah. uh, then in third place was Tony. With 46 central. points. Yeah, basically just mini Hong Kong over here. For Pikus. And then loads Lots of, of shops, shops to absorb the population and score. Which I should have had one of them, damn <laughs> it. Yeah. Then Martin was second place with 46 points. Actually, no. 49. 49. Yeah, 49. And loads of harbours. Do you want to mention about the harbours and see if anyone comments below? Uh, no, no, I've, uh, well, I've checked it now. I think basically, I think you score one in the longest column and one in the longest row. And obviously I misinterpreted that originally. Otherwise I'd have put those oriented the other way so that I've got a couple more points from it. But, ah, well, that'll be. Well, even if you got those, you would still come second because I won with 53 points. <laughs> I got most of my points, obviously, from the parks, um, which I dumped down all between the buildings and stuff. And then, obviously, I got some points from my shops, which filled up. And I scored a couple of points here and there from factories and so on. But that's it. So, we finished our game. It was super quick as well. Yeah. Between filming and as our first play, so we're checking the I rules and stuff. 90 minutes. Yeah, and it went super quick. Yeah. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts so far on this particular game and in general? I really liked it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Um, it's quite... A like you mentioned it had the, like the five tribes thing about it where you kind of sit and just looking at the board yeah and you think you know it's your go right it's like yeah i'm just thinking of, i'm trying to optimize my turn it definitely has that um but not it's not insurmountable because obviously because there's only about five or six different buildings you kind of you have an idea of what you want to do and you're kind of looking at okay i definitely want that how best to get that um, but no, I thought it was really good. Lots of options, and everyone kind of did something a bit different. And mm. obviously, when we play again, I'd like to try something different and maybe utilize some other things. And I think I probably um, didn't optimize certain things as well. Um, I think one factory down here, for example, would have really helped me out because mm. it would have scored from my harbors, and I really should have done that. Um, but that well, um, yeah, I liked it a lot. I think it's uh, if I was to score it, I think I'd give it. Um, 8.5 yeah. You know what, I really enjoyed this as well You were saying about the 5 tribes I think it has a very very similar feel to 5 tribes In terms of When you're looking at that board in saying 5 tribes as well The same thing You can you can sit there and go heavily into AP Trying to figure out every single move you want to try Or you can just go like I do Just go with a gut feeling Right, this is what I want to do This is how I'm going to go And that's how you go um, And you say that And yet you were probably the worst For AP there <laughs> Well, a couple of times I got to where you, you literally got like one or two options left and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do here? Uh, which is a similar thing I do in Five Tribes, I must admit. Well, certainly you've got that thing that you get in Five Tribes where your action that you do early causes people to do other actions which, although they're even yeah. not planning against you, you shoot yourself in the foot yeah. without realising it. And yeah, it just all goes awry. When and when, and when you change the, your situation, it gives other people options as well. So it's yeah, it's really good. I I agree with you. I think eight point five is a really good score for this. I mean, this is the first play, but even still, I really enjoyed it. It was super fast. Components are good. Theme is interesting. 
it was just a really solid, interesting, fun game. So yeah, eight point five for I me. I love the components. To be honest, the card, the tokens are really thick. I mm. thought I spent ages trying to like separate the the punch boards when I got it earlier. I like, oh no, it's one big thick punch board, and then you've got these translucent kind of cool acrylic um, oh, resources yeah, rather yeah. than wooden metal. It's just a nice change. Mm. Yeah, really good. What about you, Tone? I would say eight point five again, and it's one of the few games where I would actually say I could play it on the bounce. Mm. I quite like would like to play another game straight away. I'm happy to play. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's really good, isn't it? I mean, it's just a super fast game. You could play it probably easily. A game like this, if everyone's played, probably hour, half an hour even. Yeah. How about you? What, so you're the April 5th, how about you, Mo? I, I guess I've got to go with 8.5 as well. Uh, <laughs> creepy, but complimentary, so, you know. Are you st I'm filming you, yeah? Are you filming me? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that is a bit nice. Another one for the blue Go on, then. 8.5. Oh, are you telling me what to score it now? <laughs> uh, no, it did 8.5. It, it was a solid game. It was quick. You could play it. It's, you have to concentrate and think about what you're doing. <laughs> but, should I keep talking? Yeah, go. Uh, okay. You have to think and concentrate about what you're doing, but it still has a light flowing feel to it. So, it's, yeah, nice, quick. Good game. Yeah. Alright, so what's that? 34 out of 40? Yep. That is a really good score. This is a fantastic game. Uh, I want to say the name of the designer, but I Francois can't. Francois Gannon, is it? Yeah. Ganondorf. I think, I think this is going to be another hit for Days of Wonder as well. I think so, yeah. Uh, it was gaining a lot of buzz when it was coming out, certainly. And just to say as well, we played the classic mode, which is like a beginner mode, if you like. There is an expert variant. Um, which soups it up and also uses the rear of the boards as well. So you have, it goes up to five now. Um, and you can see you've got the one, two, three, uh, four is the row of five, but you've also got the numbers on there. So when you place, if you get like a one, you can put it in there or in any of the ones. And like, wow, yeah. yeah. Well, just looking at that, it's complicated. And they added a couple more buildings and stuff as well. It's like, my God. Oh, there's the extra buildings as well. Yeah, office towers, it's like. Ah, cool. I think this game is easily expandable as well with other buildings and maybe resources and things as well. So yeah, a really interesting, really fun game. We really enjoyed that. We might even play it again now. So <laughs> <laughs> instead of uh, saying we, we thanks for watching, we're going to go play another game. We're going to thanks for watching. We're playing this game. <laughs> yes. Bye.